Let's cook and taste Japan with Savvy Sensei right out of your own home. Hi, I'm Hiroaki Nakatani. I'm going to teach you how to cook tempura. Thanks for watching. Let's get started. We're going to make the oil used in my restaurant. First, white sesame oil. This is freshly squeezed sesame oil. And then there's sesame oil. This sesame oil was squeezed after roasting the sesame seeds, and so it has a very strong fragrance. We're also going to use corn oil. The proportion of white sesame oil is 8, and 1 for sesame oil, and 1 for corn oil. I mainly use white sesame oil because it has excellent flavor. Sesame oil has great fragrance. Corn oil is mixed with two kinds of sesame oil to make them smoother. My restaurant mainly uses white sesame oil, but there are stores that only use white sesame oil or sesame oil. There are also some restaurants that only use corn oil as well. The combination of the oils shows the characteristics of each restaurant. We use oil as a condiment at our restaurant. We consider the balance between the ingredients and the batter and add oil as a condiment on top of that to create one tempura. This is the pot used to fry tempura we use an earthen pot at our restaurant. And it's a little old as you can see, but earthen pots conduct heat very well and are able to maintain their temperature. That's why we use earthen pots. Most households don't have earthen pots, but you can use stainless steel or aluminum pots as substitutes, so please use those. Let me introduce the tools and ingredients used to make shrimp tempura. First, we have a bowl. We also have a whipper. This is a tool used to mix eggs, water, and flour to make the tempura batter. We also have chopsticks for frying. And the tray. The tray is used to place the tempura after it's done frying. Place the tempura on top of the grills to let excess oil drip. We also have a knife and a cutting board. These are wooden chopsticks. Wooden chopsticks are used to hold things without using much power. Putting too much power when holding the tempura will cause the coating to fall off. They're also used to adjust the coating. After the flour is added, it's difficult to mix with thin chopsticks, so thick chopsticks are used instead. For the ingredients, We have water, flour, and eggs. These are used to make the tempura batter. We also have shrimp, salt, and ice water. The salt is used to rinse the shrimp. The ice water is also used to rinse the shrimp. Now let's prepare the shrimp. First, let's peel the shell off.
Once you peel the shell off, cut the tail off. If you don't, it'll splatter when placed in oil. So it's best to cut the tail off. Next is the digestive tract on the back. Make a cut from the back towards the abdomen and remove the digestive tract. This is the shrimp without its digestive tract. Now we're going to rub in some salt. Put in the shrimp and add some salt. Rubbing it with salt removes dirt and improves texture. Rubbing it with salt gives the shrimp a juicy texture so don't forget to rub it with salt. When you rub it for a while, the dirt should come off. Once it does, add some ice. Add the ice and immediately pour water to gently remove the salt. Place the rinsed shrimp in a cold bowl of water to remove the salt. Placing it in ice water constricts the flesh, improving the texture and firmness. So don't forget to do that as well. There's a lot of water on the rinsed shrimp. So in order to remove as much water as possible, wipe it with a paper towel. This concludes the shrimp preparation. After removing the digestive tract and cutting off the tail, stretch out the muscles on the stomach side. First, gently make a cut one third of the way on the muscle. Make three or four cuts. If you gently push the cut from the backside, the muscle will be cut, allowing the flesh to stretch. Then, lightly squeeze to make it like this. We're now going to cover the shrimp with flour. Doing so will prevent moisture from escaping and it also makes the batter stick well. So be sure to do this step. The oil should be around 180 degrees Celsius it's 180 degrees Celsius if the batter sizzles when you put it in. Use this as a measure when checking the temperature. Now let's fry the shrimp. We're going to dip the shrimp in the batter. There is a lot of moisture initially. This will lead to a lot of small bubbles. It's proof that it's not cooked thoroughly yet. As it cooks, the sound will have a higher pitch. It's important to watch for this. A while ago, there were many small bubbles, but now you know it's cooked thoroughly because of the different sound. The rest is up to you. If you want it more cooked, you can do so. If you don't want it fried too well, then you can let it out at this point. This powder is not flour, it's cornstarch. We're going to dip it in this and fry it. We 
We also have potato starch. This is dissolved potato starch. The one fried using potato starch will have a moist coating because the potato starch expands. The one fried using corn starch will have a fragrance of corn and will have a nice crunch to it. It'll have a finish similar to that of biscuits. This one was made using potato starch and this one was made with corn starch. They look completely different and this one is fluffier while this one is crunchier.